some of the design trends that I've witnessed here at the show so far are the, um, the continuing exploration and perhaps uh, zenith or maturity of Chris Bangle's flame styling. I think this is uh, an ultimate expression of, of that language. Um, with the ultra high shoulder, the extremely deep sculpturing underneath it, the undulating form, continuous surfacing. And uh, I think they've done it really, really well. So it begs the question for me, um, as I lead the College for Creative Studies and the students um, involved with our programs, where are we going to take that next? And will it be driven by technology or will it be driven by uh, fashion trends? Well, I think technology will have to play a big role as well as the brand identity of the vehicles um, and the brand segment its placement. So the other thing happening on this vehicle, which I'm happy to see, is Infinity seems to have reconciled a little bit of the conflict they've had with Lexus, uh, being a little bit too similar to the Lexus Spindle Grill. So if uh, if this is an indication where Infinity is taking the DRG, um, then I think that's an excellent uh, approach. It's got a, a, a lot of Aston Martin in its general shape, but I think it's specific execution with the, it being much higher than the Aston and, and Ford's interpretation of Aston um, and, and very close to these uh, very slim snake eyes. So I think it's pretty cool. So as an emerging niche that's uh, started to develop in the last five years or, or even longer, um, what we have are coupe CUV crossovers. Um, they have sloping roof lines, meant to be a little sexier than the typical uh, two box volume of the CUV segment. And I, I think what they're addressing is a, a sportier uh, need from the customer who wants something higher off the ground. And, but yet a lot of those vehicles have been very, very large. So they're scaling down the size somewhat and they're, uh, and they're introducing sportier elements. And now Mercedes is in the game here and I think it's a very successful iteration. My question is, where are they gonna take it from here as a typology? Where, where, where does this evolve into? As this becomes a little bit more sporty with a four to five passenger, is there an opportunity for a two passenger? Um, we talk about it, we call it a coupe. It's a four door coupe, but is it possible to do a two plus two all wheel drive? And this is something that we've been thinking about for a very long time. And I, I think Lamborghini introduced that exact product as their concept car not very long ago. Um, and that was very exciting for me as well. So I think um, Mercedes has done a wonderful job of this one, but what's next? So one thing interesting to note about this year's North American International Motor Show is um, this is the only autonomous vehicle at the show. Um, I, personally, I think it's a, a missed opportunity. As much as I appreciate all the optimism in the and the um, premium segment vehicles that are being debuted here and the, the Ford GT, for example. Um, this is what's coming in the future of transportation, or at least it's a possibility. Um, the way it looks, I don't know, but there, it, it raises a lot of questions. For example, why are the windows blocked out? Well, the answer to that would be because they, they can be blocked out. You're no longer needing to watch the road around you. The question is, do you want to watch the road around you? So I think when vehicles like this hit the road, what you'll want are, 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 are vehicles with glass that automatically opaques. When you want some privacy, you might want to get ready for work. And, and of course, you don't want anybody seeing you in your underwear while you're doing that. You might want to take a nap in the middle of the day and black out all the windows. But then again, you might be driving through the mountains and you want to see everything that there is to be seen in the beautiful countryside. So I, I think that's a level of freedom that's coming. And um, you know, the sooner the better as far as I'm concerned. I'm an enthusiast, I love to drive. But when I'm commuting in traffic, do I really enjoy myself? Not so much. Opaque the windows, I'll sleep more on the way to work or I'll do some work. And uh, when it's time to flip the manual switch, I'm ready to go again. So um, this thing is, uh, I, you know, I've seen, I've, I've seen better executions of autonomous vehicles, but at least um, they're bringing it to the table, they're bringing it to Detroit, they're signaling that they're thinking about it and we all should be too. So this is a dream project for every car designer. Um, 
it's a package that's low, it's wide, so by default it's going to have that stance, which is so exciting. The Ford has done a great job of, of wrapping it in a really innovative skin without alienating itself. I mean, it still looks like a car that we all recognize as a super vehicle, right? So what I'm seeing in this is a lot of Lamborghini Miura references. Um, the headlights in particular and the surface seen around the front bumper here as we see it coming around. You can even see some of the eyelashes in the headlamps here. You know, as a car designer, we're at this point in history where 2015, just like painting, just like literature, creating something new is extraordinarily difficult. And when you do it, you run the risk of alienating your customer. So it becomes a, a very careful choice on if you're going to reference something, what do you reference? And the guys at Ford have referenced one of the all-time fantastic cars of all time. Just a little bit. It's still a Ford GT, but you can see some Lamborghini Miura in there, and I think it's just wonderful.